You set ready to go for game two of the Starkville Regional. Those crazy boys from Central Michigan down from Mount Pleasant getting set to battle the U. Miami from Coral Gables for the first time ever in the right to advance to the winner's bracket here in Stark Vegas. Santa Claus is dancing. And you got a chicken hanging from the top of the dugout as well. Sorry. These guys like to keep it loose. You see the 46 victories this season. One away from setting the all-time school record. First of the Mac, almost nine runs per game, fourth in the country for the Chippewas from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Batting order looks like this. Hickey will lead things off, followed by Xavier Warren, Griffin Lockwood Powell. Talking to Jordan Bischel this week, he said he's got major league potential, Nick. Yeah, he said look for that guy to be in the big leagues down the road, and he felt pretty positive when he said it has an electric arm from Pennsylvania. You said he battled injuries and he's back now ready to go. Fastball, you said 97. Well, he'll hit in 98 here and there, but he has to challenge inside to the right here, handed hitters and defend his position, control the running game. Central Michigan, not as much as Southern, but still a lot of stolen bases coming from the Chippewas. Actually, when you pick one sport, it's all the better. The 0-2 from McMahon on the way, and this one dropped into left field for a base hit. So a nice piece of hitting for CMU and the leadoff man aboard. Well, the nation's loosest team off to a good start right away. Right. That's, that's how the, we should be. That's right. That's why we're here. And Warren out in front of that pitch. The first strikeout good for change McMahon. Up. Yeah. Hickey still over at first after the leadoff single. And Gillis will smack this one down the left field line. And that one will stay in fair territory. Ready and waiting is Rivera, who made a nice play. The side's retired. Leadoff single stranded. Miami coming up to bat for the first time back in Starkville. And this offense has really come to life this year. They basically hit three times as many home runs as they did a year ago. Lala will lead things off, followed by Villar and Zamora. And Terrell hitting 286. Actually has almost as many homers this season as the entire Miami team did a year ago. He's got 22. The U had 23 last season. Pat Leatherman gets the start for CMU, and he's first team All-Mac. And he's a guy that loves to pitch. And his job here tonight with that fastball that runs as high as 92. Change the eye levels. And this one lined to deep left field. Roland going back to the track will make the catch for a very loud first down. Opposite field all the way to the wall by Jordan Lawa. Well, you know, Duty Noble's going to be rocking regardless of who wins this one to face the Bulldogs. First hit for Miami as Villar sends that one into right field. Fly ball deep left. Roland is there underneath for the third and final out. So the one out single is stranded. Top of second coming up, still scoreless in Starkville. And the punch out for McMahon. With all the shifting we've seen, Major League Baseball. This one's got a chance. The third baseman up with it quickly over to first in time. Retire the side. Nice play by Gill. Bottom of the second coming up, still scoreless. Was we mentioned the dugout parties. They like to keep it loose in this 18-game winning streak. Play a little basketball there in front of the dugout. In game, Santa Claus already has made an appearance here in Starkville tonight. A little pregame football, Nick. You always got to love that. And Yoda. There he is. How about a hug from the coach? In the middle of the game, mind you. <laughs> And he obliges them and goes back to intently watching. I love it. Raymond Gill will lead things off. First pitch has popped up on the left side of the infield. And Warren will call off Hickey. One away. Well, you get those one pitch outs. That's huge. And down he goes. First strikeout for Leatherman. First team all Mac performer. And the 1-1 one, one. ripped through the whole left side for a base hit. Stop sign is on. 
Hickey remains at third. And now CMU with the bases loaded after a couple of base knocks and a walk. Big moment early in this one. And it called strike three on the inner half. Struck him out. And a big moment for McMahon, his fourth strikeout of the game. As CMU leaves him loaded. And this one swatted a deep left. That one is gone. Miami strikes first and Rivera. One of the strongest hitters in college baseball, 5'11", 220 pounds. Showed you all that power and then some in that at bat. Yeah, that's a pop in the nine hole, huh? Fastball up. He doesn't miss it. A little bat flip to go. Well, he knows it right away. Well, you asked him an interesting question. You said, can a ball travel and actually get this far? This one looped into left center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Jordan Lala now one for two. Runner goes through the left side for a base hit. The hit run working to perfection for the U. Runners at the corners now. Gino Damari calling a hit and run. He gets it. Villar saying, oh, yeah. Here's Del Castillo, the freshman. Rips this one to deep right. Back is Cole at the track. And that ball is gone. Here come the Canes. A three-run bomb by Del Castillo. And it's 4-0 Miami. Yeah, we talked about him in the open, and Gino Damari said this guy could be the best ever by the time he's done. Freshman out of Gulliver Prep, that's a nearby high school. And that's a fastball right over the heart of the plate. Center cut, keeps his hands back and says, I'll just send one into the night. Watch the Canes dugout right here. They see it. Chase Rowland, one and two, serves that one into right field, and a good start for CMU. Eighth pitch of the AB right here. Slow roller to third. Gill up with it. And off of one leg. He'll throw him out. Fancing to second, and we'll be rolling. The Tigers finding a way to get it done. The 0-1, hammered to deep right. Del Castillo going back at the track, cannot catch up with it. That'll score a run. Digging for third is Navarra. He'll make it without a throw, and Central Michigan on the board. That'll make it 4-1. to Their 24th triple of the year, and that's in the top five in the nation right there. And that came at the right time. We talked about, can they score a run here? after they gave up four. Well, you wear down the pitcher to a point where he's going to be tired enough to give up one. And this is right at the 380 marker. Del Castillo, a catcher by trade, has been playing right field. Three ball count tonight for McMahon. And a payoff. Fly ball to deep left. Rivera going back and just shy of the track. Records the third and final outs. But CMU finally on the scoreboard. underneath that one and more in the shortstop in and out of the glove and standing at second is Rivera and if you're a fan of the Chippewas that's the last thing you wanted to see no rain expected this weekend or storms up the middle off Leatherman that may have been off his backside as he fires over to first in time for the second out well that's one way to do it Pat And he walked him. Bases will be loaded for Adrian Del Castillo. Third walk issued by Leatherman. 
Especially now, you're in a scenario where you're in pitch 79, you got 28 going in this in this inning, and you got to face Del Castillo. I'd bring a lefty in. And that'll be the call made by Jordan Bischel, the first year head man for Central Michigan. Shift is on. Playing Del Castillo to pull this one instead. Fly ball to shallow left field. Rolling on. They'll make the catch. If they score the one run, they drove that pitch count up for McMahon. And Warren slaps that one into straightaway center field. That'll fall for a base hit. So the leadoff man aboard for the Chippewas. And a rocket straightaway center. Lala at the track will make the catch. Tagging from second is Warren. He'll get to third. 0 for 2 tonight. Hitting 351 this year. Ground ball right side, and that'll get the job done. Make it a 4-2 to two contest. Meanwhile, Gillis is safe at first. And E3. Charge to Terrell. Productive out by Lockwood Powell. Sets this up. He gets it in play with the defense playing back. Ball kicks out of his glove, and the speed going down the line of Giles gets that done. And don't look now. They'll give Gillis an RBI. That'll make it a 4-2 to two game, and that'll be all she wrote for Chris McMahon. Jason Sullivan with Gillis over at first base and one out. Gillis takes off. The hit and run, that's poked into right field. Gillis rounding second, heads to third. And Central Michigan now with the tying runs aboard and just one out here in the fifth inning. Pure hit and run, and that's what you do with a veteran hitter at the plate. He knows the late steal here. From the stretch, Ciccone hit him. And that'll load the bases. Cole will take first base, and he's in some pain. And how about that reaction? Well, that you don't see every day, and that's just part of the fabric of that ball club right there. I don't know if that was planned, but... The 3-1. Ripped into left field for a base hit. One run is in. Gillis touches home plate. Here comes Sullivan. It's four to four. Right behind him is Cole. The throw off target and CMU with the advantage. A two out, three run double. Will clear the bases. And you want to talk about clutch, Evan Kratt. He's been dangerous lately. We talked about it. He was a middle-of-the-order guy. He, he has power. You saw it right there. And when you fall behind and negates the fact that you're going to throw him one of your better pitches, that loop and curveball, it's tough to hit. And he has a straight challenge, and it's up, and he's all over it. That's it ever. And this one, hammer to third. Hickey up with it. Throws in time, but it drew Kratt off the bag. He's kind of got that Craig Kimbrell approach as he leans over towards home plate. Before the toss. Cut on and missed by Gates as he's retired for the first out. Big opportunity here. They've left some men on base, and they're really playing him to pull. Hit to third. And in plenty of time, Hickey. We'll get the force out at second. No oh, palm blend. Works his way out of a jam. I didn't see anybody playing baseball. <laughs> Fastball at 95 just missed. And Zaccone wanted that one. Yeah, he got it. That's a called third. Oh, yeah, he did. And Lockwood Powell. Runner goes. Called strike three. And Zaccone. Another punch out to retire the side. Lala, Villar, Zamora do up first. They've combined for three hits so far tonight, but not here. 
Five-tool player awaits the 1-1. Down the third baseline, fair territory. Hickey over to first in time. And that'll retire the side. Call stands. Call is confirmed. They live and breathe Miami baseball. They understand it. This one will be snagged by the second baseman, Anthony Villar. Your knowledge of pop culture and social <laughs> trends. Any Red Sox, the Red Sox fans know that one. Del Castillo leads things off in a charge deep into the night, and just like that, we are tied. Wow. That didn't take long. Second home run of the night, his 11th of the season. And by far, the longest home run we've seen in this regional. That ball left here in a hurry. It, I don't, it just landed, I was just told. Watch this. A little left on left, huh? Keeps the front shoulder in. Oh, he knew he got it. Look, Watch the look in the dugout, too, after he blasts this one. Yeah, it looks at the bench, so you guys want to go ahead and pull some antics now? Meanwhile, Del Castillo's home run still has yet to land. And Doral is retired. 95 on the gun. And we'll sit down the hard-hitting first baseman to retire the side. Get your popcorn ready as Kratt sits down. Some nice Top of the order in the on-deck circle, Navarro strikes out swinging. Success they've had here at Mississippi State with that new facility as Hickey sends this one down the left field line. That'll get all the way to the wall. And he'll stand up at second base with a two-out double, and now the go-ahead run in scoring position. Monster home runs. Clutch hitting by the Chippewas. Hit sharply to short. Zamora will get the force out at second to retire the side. Maybe if the Chippewas get to Sunday, but it's certainly been an issue. And this one swatted into right center. That'll fall for a base hit. The eighth of the night for Rivera. Big turn at first, digging for second. And heads up base running. Swung on and miss. That's Cameron Miller at 6'10", wearing the Yoda mask. Served in the center field, but right at Gillis. Indeed. Ripped through the right side for a base hit. And a good start for CMU here in the ninth. We'll lift this one to shallow right field. Falar drifting back. He'll give way to Del Castillo. The runner will stay at second base. Cole is a senior out of Southfield, Michigan. Time to be the dude. No doubt. And the 1-0. Up the middle for a base hit. Rounding third is Gillis. The throw home on the way. It's not in time. And advancing to second on the throw will be David Cole and Central Michigan has a 6-5 to five lead. I'm sure Central Michigan is glad he came to his senses and said, hey, you know what? I could do this on my own. I don't need the bunt. Get the possible game winner out there. Nothing really Lala could do. He makes it somewhat close. But with two out, he was going on contact. How about Central Michigan? Cole advances to second on the throwing error by the center fielder. Del Castillo has fouled out four pitches. Could not do it that time, and down he goes. One out in the bottom of the ninth. To your point, here's the one-two. Outside corner called strike three. The payoff pitch on the way. Popped it up. 
Shallow left field. Caught and Central Michigan has done it. The comeback is complete. 19 wins in a row and what a victory here in Starkville, Mississippi. Santa Claus. Six to five, the final score. This team only knows winning right now. The biggest ball of confidence probably in this tournament. They don't know that they're not supposed to come down, back from a four-run deficit from the University of Miami. They don't know that. They just know they win ball games. And until someone beats them, they're going to keep thinking that. And they're going to be as a big a ball of confidence going into tomorrow night as they were tonight. 